super middleweight world champion, Andre Ward. Andre, before, before you do speak, I, I, I understand we've got something from the mayor with a, a proclamation, so I'd like uh, whoever is representing the mayor. Okay, why don't you come on up. Oh, all right. Here. On behalf of the city of San Francisco, we, uh, Tom Murphy and I are here to represent the mayor's office. We have this proclamation here from the city of San Francisco. Let me read it out for you. Now, I uh, just want to state that we had planned this win, lose, or draw. Now, the fact that he won makes it taste that much better. So let me read this out from the city and county of San Francisco proclamation. Whereas from his first boxing lesson at nine years old with veteran trainer Virgil Hunter at King's Gym in Oakland, Andre S.O.G. Ward learned how to hit without getting hit. And whereas combining an unmatched desire and talent with the lightning quick left hand, Andre, a native of San Francisco, trained his way from the streets of San Francisco and Oakland to Olympic gold to unbeaten professional record. And whereas Andre started boxing in 1994 and won over 90 matches as an amateur, where from 1998 to 2004, he did not lose a single match. In 2002, he won the under-19 national championship and was also a two-time U.S. national champion in 2001 and 2003. And whereas, Andre won the gold medal in the light heavyweight division at the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens, Greece. The first time in eight years, an American title. And whereas, Andre made his professional boxing debut on December 18, 2004, with a TKO in 40 seconds of the second round against Chris Molina, and has maintained a winning streak of 19 and 0. And whereas, San Francisco celebrates its native son in his next boxing match up against Miguel Kessler for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship in the Super Six World Boxing Classic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Gavin Newsom, mayor of, mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, does hereby proclaim November 21st, 2009, as Andre S.O.G. Ward Day in San Francisco. Andre, and we'd like to thank, thank Tom. Tom made this happen. So, Virgil, congratulations. And Way to go, G! All right, Andre. I'm going to do it again. The new WBA 168 pound world champion, Andre S.O.G. Ward. Uh, I don't know what to say. You know, I just. Nothing's impossible. You know, nothing's impossible. I've, I've tried to keep the same story my whole career about my faith in God. You know, I've tried to keep the same work ethic. I've tried to keep faith that, you know, I'm in boxing for a reason. I, I don't, you know, I don't believe that God has allowed me to box to, you know, to go beyond what I'm supposed to and lose my faculties. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I'm, 20, I'm 25 years old now. I feel like maybe I'll do it until I'm 30, you know, depending on how it goes. And um, I feel like I'm here to make my mark and use the stage and, and, and the platform that he's given me to glorify him. And, you know, this is just unbelievable. You know, and I, I just want to send a message to, 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 to kids, as well as the adults in this room and those who are listening, that, that nothing is impossible with God on your side. Nothing. Nothing. Right. You may not be an athlete. You know, you may be in the corporate field. You may just, you know, I don't know what it is, but, but nothing is impossible with God on your side. And I felt like I've had this story all the way up. I didn't just get this story tonight. And, you know, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. So, it's 15 years, baby. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Right now, this is a dream, man. This is like a movie. I'm dreaming right now. This is unbelievable. I mean, I got so much support from this, this fight. I mean, just, you know, I mean, guys came out in Nito Denaire. I mean, this guy gave me so much inspiration. We came up together. <laughs> See, we 
he did to you know Vic Garcinian when he won his title. I said, man, if this guy can do it, I can do it. BJ Flores right, flew in, a young up and coming heavyweight man. He's sending me texts saying, man. You know, I saw you at 17 years old. You were special. This is your not me. So many people from my church sent texts and um, phone calls and just messages and, you know, cards and just and everybody kind of had the same thing that this is your time. Go get what's rightfully yours. You've been working hard. And, and it was just it was just confirmation that this is my time. And I, I just kept telling myself that in the locker room as I warmed up that tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. And I didn't want to minimize Kessler to make myself feel better. I wanted him to stay. He, he's everything that everybody said he was, but I just felt like we were better tonight, and that was the difference. And 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 that's right. And, and Devin Alexander and Kevin Cunningham. I mean, these guys, these guys just showed up, man. This is another one that I mean, he his his ring walk, you know, with him and him and Kevin, his trainer. I played that over and over. I mean, it was late at night when I watched it, but I said, man, Devin is going for a title, and then the way he won his title. It, it just inspired me, man. And I said, man, if these guys can do it, I can do it. You know, and I look up yesterday, and they, and they got two suitcases. They show it. Kevin shows up, Devin shows up, and they said, man, we're here to see you. I'm looking like, what are they doing here? And they say, man, we're here to see you. And I'm just, I was just blown away by the support that I got from the boxing community, young guys that I came up with, and, and my team around me. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And to see the crowd tonight, it was just unbelievable. I tried to stay focused and block it out, you know, while the fight was going on. But I mean, these people came out. The people said we, I couldn't draw. You know, boxing is dead in Oakland. They gotta, they gotta, they gotta think twice now. <laughs> boxing is back on the map in Oakland. And Oakland has a new, and the Bay Area has a new world champion. Any questions? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to ask that. <laughs> Ray, you, got, uh, you didn't see me throwing any punches for you, did you? Uh, any questions? <laughs> Andre, did you even lose a minute of a round tonight? It didn't look like it. Uh, I think I lost. I, I don't know if I lost the whole round, but I, it was it was a couple points in the fight where I got a little anxious and I would. I would, uh, you know, leap at Kessler. Uh, part of that was the game plan. I wanted it to be a little rough for him. You know, I mean, he was, you know, literally inside sometimes just like, he'd yell. Like, I'd hit him with an uppercut, he'd, ah! Like, he didn't like, he didn't like the inside work. The body shot sometimes, he, he would grunt and, and we knew that going in. So part of the, part of, part of what I wanted to do was to make it rough, but I got a little over anxious. He would counter me sometimes, but honestly, he never buzzed me, never hurt me. And, um, but he, he's very tricky. He's very crafty. He's very determined, and we knew that going in. Um, but I felt like, you know, I, I, I stayed in control. Even though he would have some moments, I felt like we would get it right back. We'd we take the momentum right back. And that's key in a championship fight, you know. You, you have to take it from the champion. And that's what, you know, my pastor, Pastor Napoleon Kaufman, and, and you know, some of the elders at my church, I mean, they just been texting me over, over this, this last month and a half saying, take it. That's all they text me is take it. I'm like, all right. You know, and they just keep taking it. If you really want it, you got to take it. And I think we took it tonight. Just so you know that uh, one judge had uh, Kessler winning three rounds and uh, two judges uh, only had uh, Kessler winning uh, two rounds. So, I mean, that's how Andre really controlled that, uh, that whole fight. I'm proud of you, Dre. <laughs> you, Dre. A couple questions, Andre. Uh, what was the game plan going in? Did you expect it to be so easy? And what did you see in him that you were, that you were hoping to exploit? Um, the game plan that, that, that Verge, my trainer, that he set down was, um, you know, he said, you establish a jab, you know, establish a range. And he said, the mid, your mid-range game is going gonna, is gonna to really devastate Kessler because, you know, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like when guys are up close. If you watch him, you know, he'll put his hands here and he'll pull back. He'll pull back like this. So the mid-range game and then getting inside uh, was the key. And, and, and over the first couple of rounds after I established my jab and established my range, he said, it's just going to open up. Um, and Verge, you know, he, he verges as much as a motivator as he is a coach because we'll have a game plan, but he'll do what I call, he'll, he'll sing to me. I call it singing to me where he'll say, you know, it's your time, son. He'll just begin to tell me what's going to happen, and we won't get too technical, and I thrive off of that. You know, I thrive off of 